There are two types of enzyme inhibition to be aware of for the MCAT, and these are very intimately related to your Michaelis Menten plots. The Michaelis Menten plots can help you sort of understand the mechanisms for these two types of inhibition. And also, if you're in the presence of some inhibitor, you can use a Michaelis Menten plot in order to understand what type of inhibition is present. So the two main types of enzyme inhibition that you'll see are competitive inhibition, where the inhibitor competes with the substrate for that active site in the enzyme. So basically it can come in and occupy the place that would otherwise be taken by your substrate. So it binds at the active site. And non-competitive inhibition involves allosterically binding at an allosteric site, somewhere other than the active site. But the inhibitor will bind the enzyme somewhere and it will induce a change in the conformation of the enzyme that either completely knocks out the enzyme or reduces the ability of the enzyme to perform its function. And uh, in this case, we'll be looking at ones that pretty much completely disable the enzyme because that uh, is the one that you're likely to see tested with these Michaelis Menten plots. And so it kind of makes sense that if you have an enzyme that has a competitive inhibitor, the more inhibitor that's there compared to how much substrate you have, the harder it is going to be for that substrate to find the enzyme active site. So if we have the same amount of enzyme, but now we bring in a competitive inhibitor, that means that a few of the enzymes at any point in time will be occupied with the inhibitor rather than the substrate. And so remember here that we're plotting the velocity or rate of the reaction versus the amount of substrate. And what we see a lot with competitive inhibition is that it's really an effect of the ratio of how much inhibitor particles you have versus how many substrate particles you have. And if you have about a 50-50 mix of those two things, then you'll see a lot less activity. But then you, the interesting thing about competitive inhibition is this is something that's also tested quite frequently, is that the competitive inhibitor can eventually be overcome by just flooding the environment with substrate. If you have you know, a certain amount of a competitor uh, if you have a small amount of substrate that's about 50-50 there, then yes, the competitor, the competitive inhibitor will get in the way and it will reduce the rate of the reaction. But at some point, if you just keep adding substrate to the point where you have 99% you know, of substrate and maybe only 1% of inhibitor, you'll pretty much see the exact same level of activity because the enzyme is still going to be capable of catalyzing this reaction and as long as the substrate is the thing that's finding the enzyme and not the inhibitor then you're going to see the rate proceed just as quickly as it would if you were absent of an inhibitor and so what we've done here is we've plotted the control situation where you're looking at it without the inhibitor present and then in blue we're looking at what the curve looks like when the inhibitor is there and what you'll see with competitive inhibition is that the V max, which remember is the maximum velocity you can possibly get with that much enzyme, is going to be the exact same. Eventually, the, with the inhibitor present, you're gonna find a way to add enough substrate that the substrate is always finding those enzyme active sites, and the active sites are rarely preoccupied with the inhibitor. And so what you'll see is that the enzymes can work just as quickly if you provide enough substrate that it's always the substrate finding that active site and not the inhibitor. And what that means is that the Vmax goes up. So with a competitive inhibitor, you see the same Vmax. There's no change in Vmax whatsoever. So we'll just write here the same Vmax the Vmax will be unchanged as long as you flood the environment with enough substrate that it can overpower the inhibitor and always be a substrate particle that's finding that active site. Now what does change with this is, so remember we're looking at one half Vmax, notice that the one half Vmax, remember when that reaches our curve, that tells us Km and Km is a measure of the affinity. Notice that over here in the inhibited state, our Km gets greater. And the reason that the Km gets greater with the inhibitor is because now the affinity, 
of the substrate to the enzyme is lower due to the fact that a lot of times the enzyme is going to be interacting with the inhibitor rather than the substrate. And so it's going to make it harder for that substrate to find the enzyme and for that enzyme to find the substrate. And remember that a higher KM means a lower affinity. And so with competitive inhibition, you have the same Vmax, but you see an increase in KM, the michaelis menten constant. Remember that a high KM represents a lower affinity. So with competitive inhibition, Vmax doesn't change, but the KM point does change. Now we're going to contrast that with non-competitive inhibition. And before we get to that, let's think a bit about what's going on with non-competitive inhibition. And when you see this tested with the michaelis menten plot, it'll essentially be that the non-competitive inhibitor is going to disable the enzyme. So the enzyme no longer is capable of binding that substrate. What we'll see here is that now that we've added some inhibitor, it doesn't matter how much substrate you add, you're just going to see a lower level of activity overall. And the reason for that is that some of the enzymes will simply be useless. They'll be unable to catalyze this reaction because the non-competitive inhibitor, and you know, this is a situation where it's often going to be reversible. So a lot of non-competitive inhibitors you can reverse. Sometimes there will be ones that you can't, and that will be a stipulation of the question that you're dealing with. But if you have a non-competitive inhibitor that is preventing the enzyme from being able to bind that substrate, then your maximum level is going to be a lot lower. It's just going to be impossible to get to the level of activity that you had when you had a lot more enzymes. By adding these inhibitors, the active or functional enzymes, that number has gone down. You have a lot fewer functional or active enzyme. And so you'll simply, no matter how much substrate you add, you will not be able to get the same level of velocity or, or reaction rate. And so what we see here with non-competitive is that the Vmax goes down. So Vmax will go down. And that's a very important thing because the non-competitive makes previously functional enzymes no longer functional. And if you have fewer functional enzymes, then obviously you're not going to see the same rate levels because you just don't have as many enzymes there to catalyze it. So Vmax will decrease with non-competitive inhibition. But now let's look at our one-half Vmax in these two environments. So here we'll say this is uh, Vmax for the control setting where we don't have the inhibitor present. And let's say maybe here is one half Vmax. And so if we look at that and we sort of bring this line down and hopefully my lines are straight here, we'll see our Km show up there. Now our new Vmax is going to be at the Vmax with the inhibitor. And so Vmax will be here and one half of Vmax might be somewhere around here. Now if we were to track that over here to where it meets the curve, notice that it meets the curve at around the same point. And so it has the same Km in both situations. And so here we'll say the same Km. So with competitive inhibition, the Vmax is the same, but the KM increases because the affinity gets lower. It's harder for the enzyme and substrate to find each other, which is very important. Now here, in this kind of case, with the non-competitive inhibitor, we're making the enzymes unusable. They're not, no longer capable of being used, and so our Vmax gets lower. But notice that if, there, if the ones that haven't been affected by the inhibitor, the enzymes that are still functional and everything, they are still just as functional as they were before. And so when they are present in their environment and there's enough substrate there, they'll be able to find the substrate easily and it'll be easy to form that enzyme substrate complex. And so you don't see a change in the affinity. And that's why Km is a very important value because Km tells you how well that enzyme is able to form that complex. And notice that the ones that aren't inhibited, the ones that can still catalyze the reaction and the ones that you know, are still capable of producing the Vmax level, those ones are going to be just as good at binding their substrate as they would have been were there no inhibitor present. Only the functional enzymes can contribute to Vmax, 
And those will have the exact same affinity whether they're in a control state where there's no inhibitor or whether they're in a state where there is an inhibitor but it's not inhibiting those exact enzymes. So all the remaining enzymes will have the exact same affinity and what you'll see is that the KM remains constant in this whereas the V max goes down because you're basically making some enzymes unusable. And so if you have a situation where you're looking at enzymes in the presence of an inhibitor, a Michaelis-Menten plot can be crucial in understanding what type of inhibitor it is. The affinity will go down, which means the KM will go up, if you have a competitive inhibitor, something that is fighting the substrate for the binding position in that active site but you will have the same Vmax because eventually you'll be able to provide enough substrate that it will overpower that and the odds of the substrate finding the enzyme rather than the inhibitor are so great that you essentially are seeing the reaction occur at exactly the same level. And in the non-competitive situation, you're having the inhibitor come along and completely change the ability of the enzyme to catalyze the reaction. It essentially inactivate, inactivates some of the enzymes. And so you simply have fewer enzymes available and you see your Vmax decrease. But of the enzymes that are available, those ones are just as capable of binding that substrate and catalyzing the reaction. And that is where the one-half Vmax becomes useful. If this was our original Vmax and this is one-half, we can find our Km right down there. Because remember, Km is a substrate concentration where you see the, where you see the level that corresponds with one-half Vmax. It's a substrate concentration. And notice that in this new situation, where we have the non-competitive inhibitor there, Vmax goes down, but if we look at one half Vmax, that will still occur at the exact same substrate concentration. And so our Km won't change, and that means that there's no difference in the affinity of the enzyme to bind its substrate. As long as the enzyme is still functional, it has the same affinity that it always had, and it doesn't care about the other enzymes there being inhib inhibited and unable to function. And so some key words that you might encounter with this are the fact that you can overcome competitive inhibition by increasing the concentration of substrate. You, if you can provide enough substrate so that you're looking at a 99 to 1 kind of ratio, you can essentially assume that it's always going to be the substrate that finds the enzyme. And so competitive inhibition is something that can be overcome by adding more substrate or increasing the substrate concentration, flooding with substrate, those are all terms that may come up there. And you'll see the same Vmax, but what will change is the Km, which is a marker of the affinity. Now, with non-competitive inhibition, what you're more likely to see is a lower maximum velocity or a lower maximum rate. And so that might be a word that will tip you off that you're dealing with non-competitive inhibition. The Vmax will change. But of the enzymes that are still functional, their affinity won't change at all. So Km will be the same whether it's this lower curve or whether it's this higher curve. Non-competitive, another key word is to think about allosteric. But just realize, if you can commit these two ideas to memory, that competitive can be overcome by just providing so much substrate that the inhibitor never finds the enzyme, then that's when you're dealing with a competitive situation and the Vmax will be the same. It just might take a bit longer in order to get there. Whereas with this one, we have a situation where we're inactivating these enzymes and so we'll simply see a lower Vmax, but of the functional enzymes, they'll still be just as good at binding that substrate, so the Km and the affinity will not change. Thank you.